Well, hello everybody. It is Friday. Friday the 9th. The 9th. Or is it the 10th? I guess it's the 10th. Wow. Things are moving faster than I thought. But I'll just put this in as an early plug. Uh, the 12th, that is Sunday. I remember that. The 12th is the day that we leap forward. You know, that has to do with uh, setting your clocks up. So you're going to lose like one hour of sleep. I'm just thinking about it now in that realm. Uh, my dog usually gets me up at about 07 to 7.15. So that's going to be like mm, 6.15. Anyway, usually I end up going back to bed for a while and then get up later when I'm fully recovered and rested. So anyway, that's just a plug. Uh, Sunday, I guess it'd be the night before, whatever it is that you would, before you go to bed, move that dial up one hour. Of course, we got a lot of things now that are automatic, like my phone, a lot of things in our house. It's uh, attached. Uh, I know we've got a clock that's attached to the atomic clock and uh, it gets its signals. I don't know how through the atmosphere. And so it'll automatically update too. So anyway, that's just a freebie. But today is cast to the right side. And I have to tell you my experiment of trying to separate this out as a separate channel um, from I'm going fishing 21-3 just isn't seemingly working the way I would like it to. And I don't know why YouTube gave me the title that they did with the QL5ZW attached to cast to the right side. I, it, I don't know. It just is crazy. But anyway, I think I'm just going to stay in where we've been before. So if you can just hang with me, I'm going to share what God wants me to share. And uh, I like the idea of maybe even doing some uh, live YouTube. Um, so there's we have lots of options. Praise God. We have lots of options. But I want to read, I haven't read a word from Mother Teresa in, well, in a couple of weeks now. But here we are on March the 10th. And this really kind of highlights where we have been talking in the last, I'll say the last week anyway. So this is March the 10th from... Do Something Beautiful for God by Mother Teresa. Essential Teachings of Mother Teresa. And I think I've mentioned before, I'll be going back to India from the 1st of May until I'll return, actually hit back at Dallas on the 21st. So anyway, and I will visit uh, an area where we visited one of her uh centers in Varnasi, India, up in the northern part of India. It's a very difficult portion of India to deal with, particularly uh, the poverty levels, etc. But here's what Mother Teresa wrote. If you are discouraged, I'll say that again, if you are discouraged, it is a sign of pride because it shows that you're trusting in your own power. Your self-sufficiency, your selfishness, and your intellectual pride will inhibit His, meaning Jesus, coming to live in your heart because God cannot fill what is already full. It is as simple as that. And you know, that statement, that little paragraph, that teaching of Mother Teresa 
is truly one of the greatest hindrances of men and women coming to faith and belief in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So many people say, well, I'm a self-made millionaire. You've heard that before? Or I'm a self-made whatever. No, you're not. No, you're not. In either case, you had somebody along the way that helped you to get where you are today. Now, if I put my faith in God, if I put my faith in Jesus Christ, I can be well assured according to his word from Genesis to Revelation that he is going to be with me. He has plans to bless me. And why not hold on to those as being the rock that you would place in your life to say, if I stand upon that, if I stand upon those promises, God is going to bless me. That's according to his word. Now, let's go back just a little bit from the other day while we were reading in John chapter 3 and I'm going to kind of highlight with this in verse 17 John 3 17 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved now I love doing this because it's the truth. I'm sharing a truth now with you. Are you a part of the world? Do you live on the planet Earth? I don't care what country you're in, here in America, India, Japan, Canada, Australia, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Russia, the Ukraine. Let's look at this again. For God did not send his son into the world, into any of those countries, but the world through him might be saved. Now, for God did not send his son to condemn you, but that you through him might be saved. Let me read that again in my, this is the, the Fraser version that I want you to grab a hold of. Not the Fraser version, but the word of God. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn you, but that you through him might be saved. And then let's go on to verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I have to go to the Fraser version again. He who believes in him is not condemned. But if you who do, does not believe is condemned already because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now going back to what Mother Teresa said, you put yourself in a position of your pride to basically say, well, I'm God. I'm my God. Let me go back to what Mother Teresa said again, and then we're going to close out with this. 
If you're discouraged, it's a sign of pride because it shows you trust in your own power. Have you become a god in your own power, in your own belief structure that what you do is beyond what God, the true and living God who created all? Are you worshiping a false idol? Perhaps it is the idol of looking in the mirror and say, mirror, mirror, who on the wall is the fairest of all? And you hear the mirror say, you are the fairest of all. Whoa. God sees you as his creation. And he wants to make himself available so that he might bless you and keep you all of the days of your life. Let me look at and close out with this from what I read this morning in Proverbs. And again, I'll go back and, and share that Psalms and Proverbs I read every month. Now, let's look at where I read today in Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. There's a lot here, and I'm not going to cover it all. A wise son. This is Proverbs 10, verse 1. These are the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Foolish can also be prideful. Fools are often extremely prideful. When you look around you and you see some people that are really kind of fools, or we call them idiots, just by their actions, it's tied to a lot of pride that they have that, you know, they, they know that all, you know, I'm cool. Don't worry about me, I'm cool. In fact, I'll just put it this way. I talked with a man the other day in Walmart. I'd seen him before sitting in the front. And I asked him a simple question. I said, do you know that God loves you? He says, I don't want to talk about it. That was his response. My simple question was, do you know that God loves you? And his response back to me is, I don't want to talk about it. You know, from that, I learned a little bit of maybe that was the wrong question to ask him or to share with him. Maybe I need to be just a little bit more aware and ask him, what do you need for your life right now? I don't know. I might have got the same response. I might have got the same response. I don't want to talk about it. That's pride. That's pride. It's a form of pride. Now, let's look at a few of the comments written by Solomon. Let's look at verse 3 now. Proverbs 10, verse 3. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish. In other words, he's going to hold you up. God is going to hold you up. That's your soul, your soul to famish. Your mind, your will, and emotions. In other words, if you're in a point of depression, you there's some sort of a famishing going on in your life. And you need to be filled with the right answers that can come from God. Verse 6, blessings are on the head of the righteous. Now your righteousness comes from obeying the word of God, obeying God's command. That's where it came in the Old Testament times. It came from obeying the laws set by God. Today, Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the laws or the commands. 
I came to fulfill them. So all of the things dealing with our righteousness today, first, we come to him because he was that sacrificial lamb that was prophesied in Isaiah and other books. And when we follow after him, he said, you now become the righteousness of God. So now it says right here, blessings are on the head of the righteous. Verse 7, the memory of the righteous is blessed. Let's look at the contrast here in that same verse of verse 7. But the name of the wicked will rot. The name of the wicked will rot. Yet the memory of the righteous is blessed. Where are you today? Where are you today? I'm going to close out with this. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life. But he who refuses correction goes astray. I'm sharing with you instructions, wisdom, understanding, and love coming from God through my voice to your ears. And they are designed with only one purpose, to see that you are blessed. So, Lord, I say right now, take the words of my mouth and let them touch the heart of those that are listening. Let them see that you have great plans for them, that you want to bless them. And I know many that are watching this are struggling with their relationship with you. They've already proclaimed that Jesus, yes, you're my Savior, but they struggle in that relationship of believing everything that is written in your word is meant for them. So, Lord, I'm asking today that you will take these words and hit the hearts of all those who are open they're going to put down their own personal pride, whether it's religious pride, denomination pride, or personal pride. And they'll say, Lord, forgive me of those things, of my pride, and let me come to you in simple childlike faith so that you will pour out your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for it all. In Jesus' name. Folks, we'll see you again on Monday. May you have a, a wonderful, blessed weekend. May you find the blessings of God that you're looking for. Seek him in his word. It's there. It'll speak to you if you ask it to speak to you. You will hear. You will hear as you read. And then I just say again, if you hear, you've got to do something with it. We'll see you on Monday.